Hello everyone, today I have an artist review of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus for you. So this video is going to be long. If you want to save time, you can check out the text review that I have already written. The link is in the video description below, or you can just use the timestamps provided to jump to different sections of this video. So I'll be covering the specs, I'll be covering the design, and of course the drawing performance. I will make some comparison with the iPad Pro 12.9 inch and also with the previous model, the Tab S6. I plan to make another video on the Tab S7 Plus versus the 12.9 inch iPad Pro because that probably needs a whole video on its own. Today we're just going to focus on this. Let's talk about the specs first. So the Tab S7 Plus has a 12.4 inch Super AMOLED display while the Tab S7, which is smaller, it has an 11 inch IPS panel. So the colors on the Super AMOLED definitely is more vibrant compared to the LCD and the brightness is really good. You can use this under the sun and still get really good colors and contrast. The resolution is 2800 by 1753. So it's a very sharp display. Things like text, user interface elements like icons, menus, palettes, they are going to look very sharp, very detailed. When working from normal distance, I'm not able to see any pixelation. So the resolution here is higher than 1440p. The smaller Tab S7 has a resolution of 2560 by 1600. What this means is basically when you are playing YouTube videos, for example, you will be able to watch the videos at 1440p resolution. So the videos are going to be very sharp very detailed. For the iPad Pro, even though the spec supports 1440p videos, um, you actually cannot play YouTube videos at 1440p. The maximum resolution for videos on YouTube on the iPad Pro is actually 1080p. And if you put both tablets side by side, you will be able to notice the difference in extra resolution in the sharpness. And speaking of videos, um, there are four-way speakers on this tablet, so sound quality is excellent. And for this particular uh, YouTube app, you can actually zoom in to fill the video to the edge. So it really feels very immersive when watching videos. And this is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which is nice. Nice in the sense that when you are using a drawing app that has a lot of palettes by the side, you can have those palettes by the side, but you will still have a good amount of space um, canvas to work with. So it's really nice. Let me put an A5 size sketchbook on this 12.4 inch display to give you an idea just how big this tablet is. So it's noticeably larger compared to A5. Let me compare this with the Tab S6, which is 10.5 inch. So it's about the same size as A5. Now the Tab S7 is 11 inches, so it's going to be slightly larger compared to A5. Um, the S7 also has the aspect ratio 16 by 10. This tablet, it's really thin, just 5.7 millimeter, and you can see the surface here, it's flat, and the bevel here, it's also flat. And that's the camera bump, which protrudes out by quite a bit. But once you put on a case, this is going to flush with the case, so no problem at all. That's the power button. The volume buttons uh, at the top when the tablet is in landscape orientation. And here is the micro SD card slot. At the bottom, we have connectors for the keyboard. Two speakers on this side and two speakers at the bottom. And this is the USB-C port. This tablet comes with a charger that supports fast charging and you can use this port for file transfers at USB 3 speeds and you can output video and audio signal through this. There is no 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And you may notice that there is this uh, protrusion here. That's actually the tempered glass screen protector that's already applied on this tablet when I bought it secondhand. Thankfully, this screen protector, it doesn't actually affect the pressure sensitivity of the pen. And this is a laminated display, so there is no gap 
between the pen tip and the line that appears beneath it and there is no parallax this display definitely looks fantastic the colors brightness contrast all top notch bezels are quite thin throughout and you get some space to hold a tablet in landscape orientation like this you can see the camera is right up there instead of here in portrait mode on the back there are two cameras 30 megapixel wide and 5 megapixel ultra wide and the design here um, there are a lot of things going on this looks like antenna lines this particular model is the Wi-Fi model there's also the LTE model with uh, 5G and this strip here this is for you to put the S Pen you can only put it in this direction with the pen tip pointing to the camera if you flip it around like this it's going to be out of position the tablet and pen comes in matching color and this color is bronze with a pink hue to it there is also black and silver colors available mine is bronze because i bought this second hand and this is the only option i was able to find selling at a good price the official retail price for this tablet for the 12.4 inch model with 8 gigs ram and 256 gigs of storage is US $849. The S Pen is included, which means you don't have to spend extra money to buy this, unlike the Apple Pencil 2, which is US $129. So this pen it now has new technology. More specifically, it has reduced latency, um, which is nice. And also it supports tilt and pressure sensitivity, although I don't know exactly how many levels of pressure it supports, but it's quite sensitive. There's one small side button here with a nice click. This pen is very comfortable to hold. The design is cylindrical except for this flat surface here, which is quite similar to the Apple Pencil, which is also cylindrical and has a flat surface. So the Apple Pencil is longer and heavier compared to the pen this is more lightweight but it's not too light still feels uh, really nice to hold the build quality is also good now there is actually a battery inside that battery is used for the remote here and also for some wireless gestures even if there is no battery life uh, left you can still use this pen for drawing and writing the tip is some sort of rubberized tip and if you look closely it seems like there is a tip on top of the tip this by the way is the pen from tab s6 and i like the design of the new pen because when you are writing like this you can still see the tip unlike the pen from the tab s6 when you are writing at certain positions you can see the plastic part here it almost blocks the tip Replacement pen tips are very easy to find and very affordable due to the reduced latency so now when you are drawing the line that appears it will catch up really quickly to the pen tip so pay attention to the gap between the line that appears and the pen tip when I'm drawing this long sweeping line now this is going to be more obvious when you are drawing wide strokes sweeping lines like this just for comparison purposes, I'm going to repeat the same test this time with the Tab S6 on the right side. Now this tablet has a 60Hz display, this is 120Hz, and the latency for the pen is also not as good compared to the new pen. The app that you use can affect latency. So with Clip Studio Paint, I notice there is more latency. So the gap between the line and the pen tip is larger. And this is Autodesk Sketchbook. The gap between the line and the pen tip is smaller. You may notice some flickering with the Tab S6. That's because the backlight uses pulse wave modulation. Now, some people may be sensitive to PWM. Personally, in real life, I am not able to see that flicker. It's just that under certain conditions, my camera can actually uh, pick up that uh, flickering. For the Tab S7 Plus, uh, you may have noticed some flickering as well in certain uh, parts of my video review 
but it's not as obvious compared to the Tab L6. And this is the LCD display on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. It doesn't flicker at all under any situations. This is recorded at 60 frames per second. I don't notice any flickering through my camera. And now I'm recording at 80 frames per second and I can see some flickering on the Tab S7 Plus through my camera, but not in real life. The processor that's used in this tablet is the Snapdragon 865 Plus with 8 cores. All you need to know about that processor is when it's combined with 8 gigs of RAM and a very fast storage, um, opening applications, loading web pages, um, the overall performance, it's really very smooth, very snappy. Everything is very fast. And also when drawing very detailed stuff with a lot of textures, you can actually um, zoom in and out. There is not going to be much lag or lag if any. So this file, has a lot of textures and you can zoom in and out really quickly and when you combine it with the 120 hertz display um, the smoothness you can really see a difference between this versus other tablets all right time for some line quality test i will be using clip studio for the test and later on, I will be drawing with concepts to talk about the drawing process and workflow and performance. I don't want to spend too much time with Clip Studio because there is actually a lot to talk about Clip Studio. So I may actually make a video just on Clip Studio. What I want to show you here is how well the lines taper. This is a test of pressure sensitivity. So when you have lines that can taper very nicely, very gradually, like what you see here, it means the pen is very sensitive and quite accurate. And with this particular app, Clip Studio Paint, you can actually adjust the pen pressure settings. Not all apps will allow you to adjust the pressure curve. So with this app, you can do so. Initial activation force is very minimal. Initial activation force is minimal. You do have to press down slightly to get the lines, but it's just applying that slight little pressure. This is how thick the line really is. Let's see if we can maintain consistent pressure here. So what I want is uniform lines. And this looks good. Good as in the thickness of the lines, they don't waver because I want consistent pressure. And also when the lines are turning, you can see the curves, they are very smooth. And now for the slow diagonal line jitter test. You may notice the cursor that appears when the pen tip is close to the display. You can actually turn off the cursor if you don't want it through the Samsung settings. So this is quite good performance. The lines, they don't jitter. This is a top-down look. And if there is any jitter, it will be from my hand. I don't do the ruler test because I don't draw with a ruler on the tablet. Tilt sensitivity works fine and the transition from thin to thick, it's quite smooth. And you can have pressure and tilt working together at the same time. The app earlier was Autodesk Sketchbook and this is Concepts which also supports Tilt. However, you can see the transition from thin to thick. It's quite abrupt. So how well Tilt sensitivity will perform will really depend on the app that you use. Pen tracking, even at the edges of the display, it's very accurate. So this is a very accurate pen. The cursor will always be directly underneath the pen tip. 
A few years ago, I would say there aren't as many good drawing apps on Android versus on iPad, but the situation has improved a lot. So now with Clip Studio Paint, this is really a professional illustration comics drawing app with a lot of features. And there are other good apps as well. There's Concepts, one of my favorite. Infinity Painter is quite good. Kritar is on Android now as well. Ibis Paint X is quite good too, and Sketches, which used to be exclusive on the iPad, is now also available on Android. Autodesk Sketchbook is pretty good as well. So if you are thinking of getting an Android tablet instead of an iPad for digital drawing, sketching, illustration, I don't think you will be missing out. And now let's draw something. This app that I'm using, this is Concepts. This is one of my favorite drawing apps on Android. Concepts is an app that's available on Android, iPad, Microsoft Windows, and Mac OS, if I remember correctly. And this particular app, it actually supports strict palm rejection. Meaning if I were to use my finger on the canvas, I will not be able to draw any lines I will not introduce any straight strokes. So that is fantastic This app um, it takes pen input only You can actually choose for it to um, Draw with the finger, but obviously it's going to be much better with just the pen input and I'm using this app with my keyboard that is connected to the tablet using Bluetooth so that I can use the shortcuts. And the drawing performance, um, it's very smooth because I mean the tablet it's very powerful. And the lines they come out just the way I expect them to. It's very predictable and um, consistent performance. So the pen tip, it's some sort of a rubberized tip as mentioned earlier. Notice the tablet, it actually moves. That's because I don't have a case on it right now. And this tablet is right now uh, flat on the tabletop, which is not good for my posture. So usually when I'm drawing, I have it set on a stand like this. This is a much better angle for me to work with and earlier on while I was drawing the tablet moved so it affected this line so let me just use the keyboard to undo that and the pen tip uh, because it's rubberized when you are actually tapping on the display this is how the Apple Pencil sounds and this is the S Pen because the S Pen tip uh, some sort of rubberized texture or it feels like a felt tip. I was expecting it to have more friction but it's actually as smooth on this glass surface as the Apple Pencil. I really enjoy drawing with this app because uh, I like the textures that it has and it's a vector app so you can blow up your artwork to like huge sizes. Palm rejection for this app, it's really good. I mean, if I use my finger, I can move the canvas, but if I place my palm like this and move my palm, it doesn't move anything. So the palm rejection technology, it's uh, really smart. And this tablet, it doesn't produce much heat. It does produce a bit of heat, but not a lot. So for me, I can definitely draw on this for long periods of time, just that if you are drawing outdoors uh, in a bright environment, the screen will light up and also the battery will get uh, used more so that's going to produce more heat. So when you're outdoors, um, I'm not sure how long you can draw because uh, different people have different uh, tolerance to heat. But I am drawing now in an air-conditioned environment so it's quite cooling. And if I run my palm on the display, um, there is some friction with the glass and my palm. So if you want a more fluid drawing experience, you may want to get an artist glove. 
You can choose to apply a matte screen protector so that your palm can run smoothly on the display, but that screen protector is going to affect the image quality of your display. And there is this uh, white haze that happens when it's reflecting light. It's going to affect colors, contrast. Um, one advantage of matte screen protector is it doesn't attract fingerprints and it gives you a nicer texture to draw on. But um, I'm not sure how that matte screen protector is going to affect the tip on the tip. I do recommend getting a screen protector for the tablet though. I'm using a tempered glass screen because the quality of tempered glass is actually better. I mean the surface of this screen protector is going to be very similar to the surface of the actual glass. Uh, with plastic screen protectors, sometimes um, that texture is not the same as glass. You know what, let me just put the tablet on the table so that it's easier for me to record. Now one downside to this app is there is no fill bucket too. So to fill colors, I actually have to redraw the shape. Overall, I really enjoy drawing on this tablet. I enjoy it as much as I do when drawing on the iPad. I guess a lot have to do with the quality of this uh, display. The colors, um, they look really good. And now let's add some shadows. Now if you want more portability, you can go with the 11 inch version. But that's not a AMOLED display, it's just LCD. And the pen latency, it's also not going to be 9 milliseconds. If you want to do professional illustration with this tablet, you can certainly do so. I don't see any issues at all. I mean, Clip Studio Paint is about as professional as you can get. And I'm not even using Clip Studio Paint here. So this is the completed sketch. I actually did not use many layers. I only used um, four layers. One for the line art, one for color, texture, and shadows. And notice as I zoom in and out, there will be um, white areas. So this image is cropped off before I release my hand. The screen redraws. This doesn't happen with other apps. Um, like Autodesk Sketchbook Clip Studio, just that it happens here. Anyway, um, the performance is very fluid. You can rotate, zoom in and out, all the finger gestures are all very fluid. I'm not sure how many layers you can actually use. Anyway, the number of layers, I mean the limit to the number of layers you can use probably will depend on the apps that you use. For 8 gigs of RAM that's available on this tablet, you should be able to create a lot of layers. Many of these sketches were actually drawn on Android tablets. This one was drawn on the Tab S7. That's uh, zooming close. So overall, I had a really enjoyable experience drawing uh, on this tablet, mostly because of the screen size. This is a nice size to work with, but it can get heavy after you add a case to it. So if you need something that's lighter and more portable, you can consider the 11 inch. Um, as mentioned earlier, 11 inch is an LCD display rather than AMOLED and the pen latency is not as good compared to this. But the Tab S7 is much cheaper, relatively speaking. It starts at US $649. So um, you have to decide whether or not it's worth the extra $200 to upgrade to a larger AMOLED display with a better pen. The last thing I want to talk about is Samsung DeX, which is really awesome. Basically, it's the desktop interface for Android. 
and it's available on the Tab S7. Samsung DeX allows you to use the tablet with the very familiar desktop interface. So you have the desktop with your icons, you have the task bars, you can also open windows just like you can with your computer and have the windows um, overlap like this or you can resize the windows. Let me just use the mouse, it's easier. And mouse support is fantastic just like using it on a normal computer. There are some differences between Samsung DeX and a real desktop OS like Windows and Mac OS. Of course, I will not be able to show you all the differences. Let me just show you a few. So for example, if I want to um, copy this image and place it onto the desktop, I am not able to do so. There is no functionality um, to allow me to do so, maybe because there's no so-called desktop folder. And if I want to copy this file into another folder that I create, um, I can do so. Just uh, right click, create folder. And I can go into the folder and click here, copy here. For some reason, I am not able to control C to copy. So I have to use the right click to copy and paste. The important thing to know here is this file browser um, experience is very familiar, unlike the files app experience on the iPad. Uh, with the iPad, sometimes if you want to open a particular file with the app that you use, you have to first copy that file into that app before you can open that file using the app. Here, you just need to open the app and find a file in the file browser and open it. There is no extra step of having to copy that file into the app before you can open it. And with Samsung DeX, you can still use your drawing apps. They will still perform as a normal, just that it's in a windowed uh, mode. Sometimes you can see the cross and the minimize button. Battery capacity of this tablet is about 10 thousand milliamp hours and that can give you around seven hours of use but uh, that amount of time is heavily dependent on the apps you use and also on the auto brightness if you're using this tablet in a bright environment you can expect battery life to be shorter all right to conclude this is definitely the best android tablet out there right now it looks great, the performance is fantastic, and it has a lot of useful functionality. It can definitely compete with the iPad Pro uh, in terms of drawing performance and drawing experience. The only thing I don't like is how the pen attaches to the back of the tablet for charging. I mean, if I want to attach the pen right now, I actually have to lift the tablet to put it on the back. And there's only one way you can put the pen. Um, but if they were to have the pen attached here, people are going to say it's copying the iPad Pro. If they attach it here, people are going to say that they are copying the Microsoft Surface. So before you go, I just want to let you know that I will be making a few more videos for this tablet. One will be Tab 7 Plus versus iPad Pro 12.9 inch. One will be on the note taking and handwriting experience and one maybe on using this tablet while drawing outdoors and maybe the tab s7 versus tab s6 all right um thanks for watching i hope this video is helpful see you guys in the next video bye